upcoming graphics cards from the red team, so called reference cards, will no longer be of the blower cooler design anymore. No, AMD just announced this via Reddit, and upcoming graphics cards will instead look similar to what Nvidia's current graphics cards based on Turing and RTX 2000 series looks like. These got dual fans. Today, we're gonna look at what this means, as well as cover everything you need to know about Big Navi. AMD is planning to disrupt the graphics card market in a similar way they did with Ryzen. So, very exciting times ahead of us. Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome to Orbin Hardware. My name is Robin, my Swiss host and friend with bad posture and poor accent. Now, the fact that graphics cards are equipped with active cooling is now rather a rule than exception, and TDP values well over 100 watts is very common on modern graphics cards from both AMD and Nvidia. Despite the fact that we year after year keep shrinking the GPU die, almost every graphics card still need good active cooling to keep temperatures in place. Now, when it comes to air coolers for graphics cards, there are generally two types of uh, models where the open design is the more common one. This is the one where one, two, or perhaps sometimes even three axial fans are mounted on top of a heat sink or a heat spreader. Now, the second most common cooling solution or variant is called a blower cooler, and instead of having fans mounted on the top of a heat spreader, this design instead relies on a single uh, radial fan which passes air through a heat sink and then dumps the heat outside of the case. With an open design air cooler, the case fans are instead responsible for the heat transport, and this type of cooling solution is often associated with better performance and lower noise levels, but despite these advantages, both AMD and Nvidia have still had a long tradition of reference coolers with the former kind of cooler. And before we move any further, I'd love to hear your thoughts here guys. Which design do you prefer, the blurry design or the dual tri axial design? Let me know in the comments. When I reviewed the RX 5700, I actually did a comparison between the two and I gotta be honest here, I was a bit disappointed with AMD's performance with the blurry design and I'm quite happy that they are finally moving away from it. Now with GeForce RTX 2000 family, Nvidia made the decision to the open design with dual fans, which also AMD dipped their toes in with the power thirsty Radeon 7, but with the launch of the 2019 Navi family, actually marked the return of the blower cooler again. However, those cards seems to be the last ones as the company now confirms via Reddit that there will be a massive change on the cooler front with the next generation of gaming based graphics cards coming from the red team and in a presentation from AMD's uh, financial focus, the Financial Analyst Day, a presentation image was presented uh, with the graphics card labeled AMD without the traditional cooler, which actually created some speculations on Reddit. Rumors around the new cooling design started to spread pretty quickly, and now AMD's Scott uh, Herkelman, who's working as a VP and GM of Radeon Business Unit, recently responded that gaming-oriented graphics cards will get an updated reference cooler design with upcoming graphics cards fueled by the RDNA 2 architecture, and this obviously includes upcoming big Navi as well. And according to Herkelman, the underlying reason for the change is the response around the Navi coolers. The company's partners, such as uh, a Power Color or a Sapphire, for example, are allowed to release variants of any type. And again, I actually did a review on the RX 5700, and I actually recorded some sound samples. And as you can hear, this card can actually get pretty serious when it comes to sound levels, compared to typical open design cards, which usually are a lot quieter. However, it should be said that the Radeon 7, for example, with three fans, is still considered to be even louder, but to be fair, this card has a much higher power consumption as well. It is very important to take everything with a grain of salt, in case you are a bit out of the loop when it comes to AMD Radeon 2, Navi 2X, and Big Navi. Here's a fast recap of everything thing we know so far about AMD's plans for 4K domination. And this 4K domination statement is coming from Mitkan Kassanrucker, who works at Radeon Product Management Lead at the Radeon Technology Group. But again, I want to stress the fact when it comes to rumors, we should always treat it with a grain of salt, of course. So it turns out AMD's brand new architecture for upcoming Radeon graphics cards is not called RDNA 2. No, it is called Navi 2X, despite the name 
namings, upcoming RDNA 2 or Navi 2X, whatever you prefer. I actually got tons of interesting details and we're looking at 50% increased performance per watt against current RDNA and Radeon RX 5000 series. Now, a few rumors were suggesting AMD would unveil big Navi at this focused financial analyst day and actually talk about big Navi. This did unfortunately not happen, which made me a bit disappointed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And so right now, it definitely seems like AMD is kicking the ball over to Nvidia to be the first of the two to introduce the next generation of graphics cards. And if you don't know, Nvidia is also deep into developing their upcoming architecture, what is known as Ampere. And rumors around this architecture are suggesting tons of power. And there is a strong belief that Nvidia will unveil their brand new architecture at GTC, which apparently turned into an online event due to concerns around coronavirus outbreak. Anyway, today we're gonna look at AMD's brand new architecture, not only fueled by AMD's upcoming Radeon graphics cards coming very soon, but this architecture is also fueled by the next generation consoles, PS5 and Xbox Series X are also both based on this new redefined architecture for gaming. So during AMD's financial focused event known as the Financial Analyst Day, which basically is a day where a company uh, typically shares information regarding the company's financial development to investors. Now, apart from all the financial shenanigans, AMD also reveals some very interesting details in regards to their all new graphics card architecture optimized for gaming. But again, most of this event was just financial stuff. But the company also reveals some technical details about the upcoming hardware and it turns out that this upcoming graphics card architecture known as RDNA 2 that I've been very excited about and let me know if you have been as well. It turns out RDNA 2 is a huge deal for AMD and this is their first real architecture for gaming specifically and according to AMD should deliver 50% performance increase per watt and so we are looking at massive performance gains in games for sure. Now RDNA 2 or Navi 2X, which still feels a bit weird to say, brings a lot of new improvements that first gen RDNA was lacking, such as hardware accelerated ray tracing and something called variable ray shading, to name a few. And because AMD wants to highlight that RDNA 2 is more than just an upgrade version of the previous architecture, therefore they decide to uh, you know name this a new architecture Navi 2X. But apart from the name, AMD doesn't share any details uh, what this new features uh, uh, Navi 2X will bring except for showing you know ray tracing hardware support and in the product presentation the company presented technology demonstrations that ran on Microsoft ray tracing interface DXR 1.1 fueled by RDNA 2 GPUs and AMD confirms that RDNA 2 is the basis of the next generation of PC hardware as well as for the upcoming gaming consoles Xbox Series X and Lockhart and PS5 and knowing that the upcoming consoles will support variable ray shading it's now been 100% confirmed that RDNA 2 will support a variable ray shading and if you don't know what this is it is basically a feature that lets the GPU conserve resources by shading certain areas of the scene at a lower rate than the other without perceptible difference to the viewer and this will have a huge impact on the frame rate and the biggest indicator that RDNA 2 is in fact more than just an enhanced version of the predecessor is first and foremost the improvements in performance per watt and according to AMD we're looking at an efficiency of the architecture has been increased by 50% stand against you know current uh, Radeon graphics cards and first generation RDNA and the increased efficiency is based on several individual improvements where optimizations in the microarchitecture have led to an increased efficiency per clock cycle or IPC. There's also been optimizations on the GPU level where the complicity of the GPU design have been reduced and this has further improved the energy efficiency. And because RDNA 2 or Navi 2X is staying on the same manufacturing process, 7 nanometer, which is same as first gen RDNA, CM 50% increase performance per watt is very damn impressive and it speaks to how much time and effort that probably went into this new design and honestly I cannot wait 
uh, for what AMD got in mind for us in 2020 in terms of new graphics cards and I would love to hear your thoughts here but I think we're going to see you know a very interesting battle between AMD and Nvidia in the graphics card department in the upcoming months ahead and remember Nvidia is also working hard with Ampere which is rumored to take the manufacturing process to 7 nanometer technology as well and something that is worth having in mind is that AMD has actually had a manufacturing leading edge with the 2019 Radeon RX 5000 series of graphics cards over Nvidia because current RTX 2000 series based on Turing is actually manufactured on the less advanced 12 nanometer process and so in order to stay competitive with Nvidia RDNA 2 needs to offer more than just manufacturing technology optimizations and it definitely seems like AMD understand the situation and they seem to be on top of things and when it comes to the manufacturing process it looks like AMD is actually backing on their earlier statement that the company would use TSMC 7 nanometer technology with EUV lithography also called N7 and instead AMD now mentions that an improved variant of TSMC's existing 7 nanometer is instead going to be used here but unfortunately that is basically all that we know so far obviously we're gonna have to wait and see how this turns out and when we start seeing more leaks I promise to let you guys know AMD also mentions future plans for you know the next step in the architecture and this is known as RDNA 3 or Navi 3X which is supposed to be manufactured on an unspecified uh, uh, advanced manufacturing technology that will enter the market by 2022. AMD does not mention when RDNA 2 makes the entry into PC components but the architecture is confirmed in the upcoming gaming consoles PS5 and Xbox Series X. These are set to launch uh, in Christmas 2020 and this to me in the case that AMD is still waiting for Nvidia to present Ampere first and it seems like we're gonna have to wait until Computex for a big Navi reveal. Uh, guys I would love to hear your thoughts here what do you think how long are we gonna have to wait for big Navi and if you don't know it has already been confirmed by AMD that they are going to show us big Navi this year. You know my main message to our fans is this is just the beginning for us in 2020 and um, I've heard a little bit through uh, you know Twitter and Reddit that people are wondering about you know big navi and um you know i i can say you're gonna see big navi in 2020 um awesome. there, there there might be a few people wondering about zen 3 as well and i can tell you zen 3 is doing really well we're excited about it exactly. and uh, i look forward to talking more about that later in 2020. watch either of these two videos for more content and i will see you over there i want to thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you guys in the next one